Joining us now for a closer look at the first quarter and a first on CNBC interview, Cody CEO Sue Nabi. Sue, great to have you with us. Welcome. Good morning, Melissa. Uh, you saw strength in, in a lot of different geographies, but I wanted to focus first on what you're seeing in the North American consumer and what you saw, particularly over the past couple of months, as consumers here were digesting what's going on in the banking crisis. Yes, indeed, what we are seeing, and which is in a way uh, explaining our you know, uh, 11th quarter of performance that is uh, in line or above expectations. Let me please remind everyone that we just posted 15% of growth for the quarter, 16% coming from our prestige business, and 12% coming from our consumer beauty division. And indeed, the U.S. is one of the key highlights of this growth. It's one of our fastest growing region in the world. And this is really both parts. On the consumer beauty side, CoverGirl is posting double-digit growth now since a few quarters and is really the brand that is uh, you know, reinventing itself quarter after quarter, uh, leading the clean beauty uh, innovations. And consumers are looking for healthier, cleaner options uh, when it comes to uh, their usage of makeup, but also in, 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 <coughs> sorry, in, the area of <coughs> sorry, in the area of fragrances. I'm sorry, I have something in my throat. And when it comes to prestige, I can tell you that our brands are also doing fantastically well. And you may have heard me speaking earlier about what we call the fragrance index. The fragrance index is what explains that why the U.S. prestige fragrance market is 60% above the levels of 2019, which is really unprecedented. And this can be explained with the conjunction of Gen Z's, male consumers, People coming, you know, from the Hispanic community who are newcomers to the fragrance category, exchanging on social media about what is the latest fragrance that people love, what is the latest ingredient that's trending. So all of this explains, of course, the performance of the market, but moreover, the overperformance of Coty as a prestige and fragrance company. I guess more specifically, Sue, I'm, I'm trying to get a, a sense of how the cons what the pattern of consumer spending has been over the past two months. Have there been any sorts of pullbacks, particularly when you're talking about, you know, a, a fragrance that costs $100 or, or more per bottle? Uh, you know, that's, that's a small luxury. That's a small luxury, but indeed you have to compare it to bigger luxuries and bigger spendings. And consumers are probably giving up on, you know, bigger spendings, but not on this kind of luxury, specifically on the fragrances. Again, this fragrance index, we try to understand why this new generation of uh, Gen Z's, men, people coming from Hispanic community are now coming into this category. And we hear consistently a story around mood boosting, feel good products, things that allow you to escape from the daily life. And this has no price, I have to say. Yeah? <laughs> That's true. If they work, there's no, uh, no price too high to pay. Sue, um, what are you seeing in terms of your business, how it's tracking in China with uh, travel-related demand, things like that? Of course, we did see uh, Estee Lauder have some troubles along those fronts. So in China, you know, the company is starting from a low base. Uh, in a way, this is a great protection for the company. So we have mainly upsides coming from this country, hopefully in the near future. Uh, in, indeed, Q3 was a quarter where, you know, uh, was half of it made with lockdowns and the other half was, you know, back to, I would say, more normal activity. But what we are seeing in Q4, specifically during the month of April, is, uh, you know, level of sales that, that are above 2019 levels. So this is great news for our business, given the white spaces we're having there. You may have heard that we launched the first... I would say skincare launch of Coty as a company in China behind Lancaster brand. It's called Ligne Princière, which is off to a very good start. Consumers love the formulations. They love the princely heritage of this line that comes from Monaco. And the conversion we are seeing today in point of sales is quite high.